So when you're in ketosis, that means the liver is making ketones. Ketones are a fuel that get put into the bloodstream. So one of the first things you would notice is increased energy. You have this, this super fuel that your body is creating from fat that's now in your bloodstream. Uh, one of the things that people notice is they no longer crave sweets as much. Uh, would, you, would you all like that, is, by the way? Which is huge, which is so, huge, yeah. yeah. So I, I'm only pointing this out yeah. because the people I've talked to, like you, who are successful in keto diets, say it's easy because they're not craving the foods they know they can't have. Right. So another reason or another way you might detect that you're in ketosis is you might smell it on your breath. A little metallic breath, a little sweet rotten apple breath or something like that. But it doesn't have to be bad breath. No, people, no, no. People no, think no. they're going to no, smell I... like the worst thing imaginable. No, no, no. no. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, then a, and then a final way is, is on urine strips. So, you know, you pee purple, right? It's a, that's one of the hallmarks of being in ketosis is it's demonstrated by the, by the urine. Yeah. So come on over. I want you yeah. to show everyone what kinds of foods we sure. can and what we can't eat on this program. And again, Absolutely. people aren't shipping this to you in a box. You're going to actually make these decisions yourself. We, we're treating you like an adult because you should be treated like an adult to make wise decisions. So what is okay to eat? Green checks for keto. Right. Okay. So... Um, Protein rich, these are clean proteins. So we got beef, pork, lamb, chicken, uh, turkey. So the, the, these meats have fats, obviously, which right. is what you're looking for, but you can get your fat without having to produce, you, know, you don't have to have a steak to get the fat. Absolutely not. So then we have uh, nuts and seeds uh, and oil. So we have uh, macadamia nuts, one of my favorites, pecans, uh, Brazil nuts, uh, avocado oil, uh, coconut oil, butter, ghee, um, uh, uh, full fat yogurt, for instance, and even some of the, you know, the fringe foods like unsweetened almond milk are okay. I'm just going to go through a couple of these things. First of yeah. all, so there's lots of things you can eat that are actually arguably good for you, but there are things, this is what throws docs off, mm -hmm. they're in the don't eat category, they're right. also good for you, right? right? I mean, we all know not to have soft drinks, but what's the problem with an apple or a potato, so, for example? Yeah, so apples, carrots, those are what we call high glycemic fruits and vegetables. So they convert to glucose pretty quickly in the bloodstream. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to reduce the amount of, glu of glucose that gets into the bloodstream because glucose shuts off ketosis, right? right? So we want to avoid bread, pasta, cereal, uh, cakes, candies, pies, cookies. I'm sorry, but, you know, that's, <laughs> oh, that, that goes along with it. They're going to rush the stage. No, but look at all the good stuff you can eat, right? So, so uh, you know, yeah. Mark, thank you very much. We'll be back. We'll check in okay, in a second. Okay. So anyone who does keto knows their macros. That's the breakdown of how much fat, protein, and carbs are in their daily diet. And most keto people keep their macros at around 70% with 25% protein and about 5% carbs. But listen, everyone has their own approach. So I want to call in keto coach Stephanie, who actually has more fats in her macro than, for example, Mark does. Did I get that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How much more fat do you have? Go up to about 80% around 200 grams of fat. So it's mostly fat in your diet. Yes. And how do people calculate out the amount of these macros in the real world? They're not going to be weighing them in scales all the time. No. Dr. Oz, people, this is the one thing with my clients. They're like, Steph, how do I measure this? And I'm like, it's simple. Just use your hands. So for example, yep. if you're going to measure your protein, you just use two to three fingers. That's two to three ounces. You place it over your protein. And that gives you the idea of how much. Okay. Then you put your hands together like you're going to pray. And now we have the thickness of the protein. Super simple. Yeah. And there's a rule of three that you abide by that shows you we're getting enough of the fats that we need. Yes. So when it comes to your fats, it's very, very simple as well. You take a tablespoon of olive oil. You'll go one, two, three onto a plate. That's your rule of three. You just count them out. Just count them out. So when it comes to your vegetables, yep. you take your hand, mm -hmm. you grab loosely, which symbolizes one cup of a cruciferous vegetable, mm -hmm. plop it down on your plate. If you have a salad, if you have cooked vegetables, you can go up to three handfuls. Typically, go up to, people go up to two. Okay. One, two, or three. Mm -hmm. And that's easy. Just a loose hand equates a cup. Part of the reason I wanted to have you on was I wish I wanted to understand how it worked for you. So you've been on a keto diet for 10 years, is that right? Yeah, 10 years, guys, 10 years. And how has it affected you? 51 years of age, 51. I used to be a professional skateboarder and I ate horrifically. And because I've done keto for so long, for 10 years, all the inflammation has gone down to here. So my health is amazing. I cannot speak more highly of keto.